All right, so in the past couple of videos, we've talked about arc length, and now we're gonna kind of build off of that when talking about the area of a surface of revolution. So now we're going to be taking a curve, let's say y equals x squared. We're gonna revolve it around an axis. Let's say we're revolving it around the y-axis, okay? So we'll get something like, actually this will be, sh we'll get something like this, Okay, and we want to find not the volume, right? That was the beginning of calculus two. We were finding the volume and all that, but now we want to find the surface area. Okay, we want to find the surface area of this solid, and we can do that with a formula that's pretty similar to the arc length formula. So here are our two surface area equations. Okay, so you're going to get different equ different equations when revolving functions around different axes. Okay. So if you're revolving around the x-axis, what you're going to get is that the surface area is the integral from a to b of 2 pi y, the square root of 1 plus dy dx squared dx. Okay, and when revolving around g of y about the y-axis, right, you're still getting the arc length. Okay, this is the arc length. You remember that from the past couple of videos, but 2 pi x, okay, that's literally the addition. So if you're revolving around the y-axis, you put a 2 pi x in front of the arc length equation. And if you're revolving around the x-axis, you put a 2 pi y in front of the arc length equation. Okay, that's pretty much it. Okay, so now we're going to do a quick example of finding the surface area. Alright, so we have our example written up on the board here. Find the surface area of the solid obtained by rotating y equals square root of 4 minus x squared on the interval negative 1 to 1 about the x-axis. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do here is just write down our equation, okay? But what is our equation going to be? Well, we're revolving around the x-axis, okay? So we're going to do the surface area is equal to the integral from a to b of... 2 pi y, the square root of 1 plus dy dx squared dx, right? So we have our addition, right, 2 pi y, and we have our arc length equation, okay? So that's really all the surface area equation is. It shouldn't be too hard to memorize because you're just putting something in front of the arc length equation that you already know. So... We now need to find dy dx squared, okay? That's the, that's the number one thing that we have to do right now. Okay, so what is dy dx squared? Well, I don't have enough room to write it on that side, so I'm just going to write it over here. We know that dy dx is going to be equal to, well, if you're having trouble taking this derivative, okay, just kind of think of it as like rad u or something like that, okay? We know that it's going to be 1 over 2 rad whatever is you know, inside that radical, whatever. Okay, in this case, it's 4 minus x squared. We also need to take the derivative of the inside, which is going to be negative 2x. So we get multiplied by negative 2x. Okay, great. So this means that dy dx is going to be equal to negative x, because these 2s end up canceling out, over rad 4 minus x squared. And when you square both sides... Okay, when you square both sides, you get dy dx squared equals x squared over 4 minus x squared. And don't be fooled, you can't simplify it anymore from there. So, the surface area is now going to equal the integral from negative 1 to 1 of 2 pi y. Well, what's y going to be? Well, y is rad 4 minus x squared, right? We're integrating with, it with respect to x. So that means we need to have y in terms of x written down in our formula. So we're going to get 4 minus x squared in that radical. And then we also have 1 plus, well, what's dy dx again? It's, well, what's dy dx squared again? That's x squared minus x squared over 4 minus x squared. Then we have a dx. Okay. So now this looks extremely messy. Right? This looks even worse than arc length. But... We can just, since these are both to the one half power, right? Since these are both under the square root, we can just combine these, okay? So we can say that the surface area is equal to the negative, the integral from negative one to one of two pi, the square root of four minus x squared 
times 1 plus x squared over 4 minus x squared dx. All right. If we multiply a 4 minus x squared by the first term, then we're just going to end up with 4 minus x squared. Okay, and if we multiply 4 minus x squared by the second term, well, this 4 minus x squared cancels out with this 4 minus x squared. So we're just left with x squared. Okay, now what you see here is that the minus x squared cancels out with the plus x squared, and the square root of 4 is 2. So we get this surface area is equal to the integral from negative 1 to 1 of, this will be 4 pi dx. Now, all this is a constant, so we can pull it out, okay? And honestly, I kind of recommend just pulling out the 2 pi in the beginning. I mean, it just is one less thing that you have to worry about later on. But you can do it whenever. So we're going to get that the surface area is equal to 4 pi x evaluated from negative 1 to 1, which is equal to 4 pi. And this will be, well, we're going to have minus a negative 4 pi. Right, minus a negative 4 pi, which is just 8 pi. Okay, so, you know, look, look to combine those square roots. Look for, you know, something easy, something like that. All right, because, you know, most of the time, or at least some of the time, that's what it's going to end up being. All right, so we're going to do some practice problems in the next couple of videos, but uh, that's going to do it for this video. So if this video helped you, make sure to leave a like and subscribe by clicking my icon in the top left. You can also view the playlist for more applications of integration in the next video in the series. See you soon.